having um, enough space to accommodate uh, accessible entrances that are covered and stairways that are covered. Um, part of the issue that becomes with this as well as the zoning on the property uh, is uh, a suburban office um, zoning currently right now and it has some different restrictions in comparison to a residential zoning. Uh, so overall, as Steve had stated, we are looking for a, a multiple amount of variances um, as notated in our application from building coverage ratio, um, side yard setback, street yard setback, and minimum paved surface setback in dwelling unit separation off-street parking spaces required within this uh, zoning instance and minimum eve width. Starting out, uh, the building coverage ratio. We're requesting uh, an allowance of 0.51 versus 0.5. Again, just due to the nature of what we're trying to provide uh, with uh, our plan that it uh, limits us a little bit just because of the size and the nature of the existing sites. Front yard setback, uh, we're requesting a one foot five uh, building setback in uh, along the front uh, Pan Ave side, which is uh, consistent amongst the existing structure right now. This is allowing for a, uh, a double decker porch to be added onto the front as far as a, a means of egress and also from uh, a convenience to each tenant. Side yard setback, uh, we're requesting a four foot eight variance building setback along the west property and a one foot nine building setback along the east property. Uh, again, this is allowing for uh, additional uh, covered entrance ways and access, uh, not encroaching uh, any further than uh, current standards uh, on that property. Paving setback, uh, with the addition of the additional garage, we're requesting to get the paving uh, closer to the lot line, which uh, gets closer than the required setback uh, within, um, within the zoning standard. And then same with the rear yard setback, we're requesting a 24 foot, four inch building setback along the alleyway side. Off-street parking, uh, we have about two and a half spaces for off-street parking as well as two vehicle spaces within. Uh, for the uh, zoning, I believe it's three parking spaces per unit as what's requested with that. And then minimum eve width, we're requesting a 10 inch eve width. Uh, that's just being consistent with the existing building and existing structure. I think that outlines it all. Steve, do you have any comments? Yeah, I think um, a couple a couple of things to add. Um, we did receive two letters um, from the owner of um, let's see, five hundred two Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the property owner to the east, I believe, and then five ten. Uh, um, Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the property to the west, both in support of the um, proposal. I think uh, a couple of the comments that I would say is, as uh, Mr. Presky mentioned, there, um, the property has a zoning designation of suburban office, so that's part of the reason why they're here today. Um, but as you can see from the drawings you have before you, the maps, all the residences, you know, basically by the county courthouse along Pennsylvania Avenue are duplexes and single families. Um, we have a, a gentleman, I'm assuming you must have just recently purchased the property or have you had this for some time? Yeah, I purchased it in October. And there must be a reason for that. Well, again, uh, I live across the street. I was looking at uh, rejuvenating it. I've got a couple of people my sister, my sister-in-law, and someone else who would like to live there. So I thought I'd refurbish it into a two-family, uh, you know, simply because of the location. Yeah, and, and so, you know, when you take a look at some of the properties over there, these are all fairly tight lots. 
they're um, uh, uh, put in there together. You can see how the front lot line is at an angle over there. So you can see some of the need for the uh, variances to the front yard setback. Um, not really, I mean, they're increasing the footprint, but that's to add a garage presently. There's nothing there. There's a number of the other adjacent properties uh, next to this that do have garages on the alley. Um, it's a significant, you know, improvement to the property. You can see some of the pictures on the screen, what's, what you have there now, and, you know, the shape it's in, and the fact that we have someone who is taking a property on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is one of the most heavily traveled corridors to the lakefront, and looking to improve it and, and have some vision and see what it could be. Um, yes, there's quite a bit of variances, but this is a, a very positive project and staff is recommending it. Pat, do you have anything to say? Nope. It would be improvement over the existing area. Rob? Any discussion? Ed, you got any questions? I, I, I believe there was a neighbor. I didn't know if there was anything that you wanted to add or. I just want to say I totally support his idea and his vision. Um, I think it'll be a 98% improvement. But my only question is there is a sidewalk between both our properties. I, which which, I property, really which property are you, sir? 502 Pennsylvania Avenue. That's to the east? East, yes. Okay. And I was just curious about like the sidewalk. I know we discussed it, but I just, you know, it, it, who's responsible for that or is that, you know? Are you going to take all that in? Gotcha. I wasn't sure. So I was yeah, well, apparently I'd have to get an easement from him. Uh, I don't have a problem with it, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll have a lawyer draw up an easement for sure. the sidewalk that. Uh, is partially on your property. So yeah, I, I I didn't even realize that, and I've been there I've been there almost thirty years, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, it was but, brought out when we did yeah. the survey. Are you yeah. two gentlemen getting free uh, passes for a trip to Mexico or something from the? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> what? No, um, I, I don't what? I'm I'm taking a look at the um, the survey on the screen, and it's the one on the east side over yeah, here. Five, is this? Five hundred two is mine. So, so that sidewalk is on, goes on to on your property. property. Yeah, but I, like I said, I didn't know if I, if I own it or he owned it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sure. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. I'm looking. There we go. My fault. Thanks. So just. So that would be this area. Right yeah, here, correct. correct. Right. Mm -hmm. to, to clarify, yes. currently right now the the existing sidewalk is on the neighboring parcel, um, so it's kind of an uh, existing non-conforming element to it. So what I've suggested is to get an easement okay. to legally make that proper okay. of what it is and okay, who fine. maintains it and uh, and so on for maintenance. Okay, yeah, because I would go half and half for yes. somebody. Yes. No, no. But, uh, Does that answer your question, Dennis? Yeah, uh, yes. And then, like, one more question, too. I know I should have did this on the phone, but, like, I'm considering a deck on the opposite side of my garage, but I don't have a variance yet for it. What's the yardage you have to be off the property line for a structure what, for this city? I think what we can do on that is probably you could either uh, give myself or the inspector a call. call? We can okay. probably have, okay. to, and That's I don't right. mean to, you know, but maybe we could have that conversation and okay. then we can talk a little bit more yes, because sir. it may have to go through a similar process like we're talking now. Okay. Yes, sir. Everybody done talking or call a question? I think Pat. Pat? Oh, yours. Oh, Pat, did yours light up? I uh, press the button and it should turn red. Before we can issue a building permit. That easement has to be in place because that's a service walk. So just keep that in mind. And to the neighbor, I'm Pat Eric. I'm the building inspector. Give, okay. Feel free to give me a call okay. and I can give you that information. Okay? 
Having heard that, I'll call the question. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's carried. All right. Thank you. Dale, you got yourself a deal. All right. Thank you. Next up to bat is uh, Chad Moore. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Jack, Jack Westfall. Westfall. Um, so what we're going to be taking a look at here is uh, uh, Mr. Jack Westfall is requesting to construct a deck in a front uh, front and street yards at 1034 Bluff Avenue. This is uh, a deck that started construction without permits and he's here to uh, discuss the possibility of receiving a variance to allow him to continue to construct that. Hi, I'm Jack Westfall. I want to first of all apologize for that permit issue and just as a background or context on Monday of that week um, I called for a an appointment for surgery, and they said uh, as soon as they received the, the pathology report, they'd schedule it. Well, I got a call the next day on Tuesday, and they scheduled it for Thursday morning. It was a four-hour surgery. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was just a little bit out of it. And that, that was the week I was supposed to apply for the building permit, so. It's not an excuse, but I just wanted to provide some context that I wasn't, you know, trying to get away with anything. Um, and in that respect, um, this is Brian, the carpenter, and um, he put up his uh, his sign, so uh, we weren't trying to hide anything. Um, it just, as I said, it just got. Caught up. Um, at any rate, the property is at uh, 1034 Bluff. That's uh, for my taxes and water and everything else. Um, that's the address. Um, so the front of the house, I understand, is 1034. And then it has, you know, two side yards and a backyard. Now the side yards, um, it's five feet off the neighbor on one side and um, some 16, 18 feet on this side. And uh, the tenants, um, downstairs tenant has a, a small girl and he wanted, you know, just some privacy um, for them to be outside. And being that the side of the house is kind of on the street and um you know just just no privacy and um you know so that's awkward yes so um right we designed this to uh you go out the front door and then around to a side and and that's going to be a porch it's not really a deck it's going to have a 42 inch high handrail all the way around it. You can only access it from the front door. Um, so it's not really like a deck. There'll be no, no other access to it other than from the front door. And, you know, the plan was, you know, have some private space because other than that, there's no private space on that lot. Um, Ask a question. So. <laughs> When, when you talk, when you say privacy, is the deck just going to be a deck with rails, or are you screening something off? What we don't have a sense in terms of oh. what the deck itself, you know. So whether it's you or your contractor, someone needs to, you know. When you're talking privacy, a lot of times people are putting up a fence and screening things off. Um, so what is your definition of privacy? Well, it'll be a 42 inch high handrail with. Uh two by two spindles every four inches. Okay. So it's more, it's not necessarily privacy. It's no. you want a space to hang out on. I mean, it's, yeah, that's what a deck's for it in private. So, well, um, semi-private, it's yeah. not, it's not on the street, let's say out on the grass. Yeah. And you know, he can leave his daughter out there and stuff like that. So, so the issue before the board is, 
Um, just like a lot of our fences and things like that, there's stuff that we uh, have as far as setbacks along fronts and street yards, typically uh, uh, 15 feet for uncovered, 25 for the house. Um, a lot of times we talk about design in the front yards. This looks like it's going to be strictly wood, treated wood. Um, are the rails or anything, any type of color to match the building? What Are they no, well, stained? What are we talking well, about doing? Well, you have to leave it for a year before you can paint it. But, yeah, we would be painting it then white to match the house. But you have to let it age for a year. So we're just going to have a real no yep. shadow box or anything. No, no. It would just be a typical typical deck design. So he's, he's really asking for the cut down on his variance because of the 25 foot setbacks and whatever. That's correct. Yeah, typically, you wouldn't be allowed to do this. You know, if you take a look at it, some of the, the, the maps or the uh, pictures I have, uh, there are some uh, homes in that area that do have some stoops. Uh, that encroach from the house a little bit. And so when you take a look at the deck, it kind of lines up with some of those things. Um, but, you know, again, what it comes down to, you know, when we're taking a look at these things is what's it going to look like? Are we just going to have a treated deck that's just jammed out in the front yard that looks so, so allows them to do what they want, but with everyone passing by it and looking at it, is it a decent looking um, deck? And so whether it's, you know, uh, wood rails, you know, uh, different materials, those would be the types of things that the board should consider. It looks like the contractor maybe has Wait. something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Brian from B&I Builders. I, I understand under ordinary circumstances that the responsibility for the permit, the submitting the design, the variance, all that falls on me. Um, however, I know Jack personally. I've worked on his other properties, and uh, this is something that he didn't have to do. So... He takes care of his properties. He goes above and beyond. Um, I think in this case, like he said, he's going to let it weather for a year, maybe 18 months, and then so. paint it up. Uh, so it'll be tastefully done. I, I also hope you'll consider the fact that it is set back. Uh, I don't have the measurements in front of me, but I believe we're about seven feet off the edge of the sidewalk. Um, Eight and a half, I is, think. Is it? Okay. Uh, not only that, it's a, it's a corner lot as well. So... And yeah, and, not, and, not and much with respect to the rest of the yard in the back. Um, with those measurements, you know, you got to make sure they're right because if they're not, you're coming back. Right. So he doesn't board. have a survey with a plot plan or anything? Nope. He's got a couple of sketches, and uh, I don't know exactly how they came up with the measurements. Well, just be Matt, measuring do you have anything? I know, I know the one side yard is five feet to the east, and uh, I wasn't aware of an alternate setback for a side yard. So, Yeah, this is the trouble we get into when people don't call ahead of time. But, um, I don't, Pat, I don't know if you had anything. Well, the only... That we would not be here tonight had the contractor followed the rules and applied for a permit um, with building inspection. Uh, first of all, whether he is licensed in the city and uh, the location of the deck, it would have been denied at that time. We would not be here. So now it's kind of asking for forgiveness. Rob, have you got anything? Ed? I do. I don't know if you. I guess if if the, if this was done the proper way and went through the right channels, would this have gone through, as far as the the, the staff is concerned? I, I'll answer quick, and then Pat, you can. Um, it it would have been denied, and they would have probably had to come and do what they're doing okay. at this point in time. Okay. May that, I say? May yeah, I say that's one correct. Thing about uh, the permit process, if I could. Um, like I said, ordinarily, obviously, we all know it falls on the contractor. However, like I said, I know Jack personally. I'm actually from Green Bay, so if he tells me he's going to secure the permits and submit the drawings, I trust him to do that. Um, that week, he had a procedure done on his eye. I believe the materials showed up uh, prior to us starting. 
and there was some spindles missing and a few other things, so I kind of ran them around for that. Um, but if he, you know, if he tells me he gets a permit, I don't question Jack. Um, like I said, he did have a few things going on health-wise and the material delivery, uh, things of that nature uh, that week, so. Are you a licensed contractor? I am, yes. And you, in Green Bay, I'm sure you, when you're gonna do something like this, you gotta have a billing permit to start out, correct? Right, and and usually they ask to submit a drawing like, like you stated and, and go from there. What's your idea? How far are you set back from, different places have different rules. Some people say you have to be so far from the center of the road. Other guys say you have to be so far from the curb. So obviously I would have got all that information if I would have pulled a permit. Just out of convenience sake, uh, I, I set Jack up to do it and I just assumed that if you guys needed any of my information or credentials that you'd ask for it. Or, um, so we just went ahead and started and I guess I didn't question him. So it kind of, the blame falls on both of us, I guess, but. <laughs> Um, well, I'll entertain a motion from the floor. Kevin. Well, if I can, I can ask another, another question. Like um, normally, under these circumstances, we don't have any kind of a survey, so we don't know what we're, what the measurements are, how close to the lot lines, and all that stuff. Are officially, I mean, we have, we're, we're just kind of hearing rough guesstimates. Normally, under these circumstances, before we allow anything to really move forward, is we typically want to get at least an official survey, right? So we know exactly what we're. In other words, what we really like is a building permit, which would have a survey in it, wouldn't it? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't look I like it was one. Question. I can answer that. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I mean typically the answer is yes. Sometimes what we've done is to indicate to the applicants, hey, you guys need to know what you're coming in because the board could, if they approve it, require a survey to make sure that these measurements are indeed what they are. So say for example, they got denied. They wouldn't have to, the expense of having to go through a survey. Um, but the board could say, hey, if we're considering this, you will submit a survey to verify that those, what you're showing us is correct. And then that permit could be issued. So that could always be a condition of approval if that was something that we were looking at. I mean, I think I kind of like that idea because right now it doesn't look like it's, it's uh, to me, it doesn't look like it's going to be a terrible project, you know, when it's all done, especially if it's going to kind of match in and blend in with the, with the property. But I think we kind of do need a, a, an actual survey yeah. to make it conditional just to stay consistent with all this other stuff that, you know, all the other projects we approve or deny or something like that. We just, I think we should start there and make that as yeah. a conditional so what you're saying is we could make a motion approving it subject to them getting a building permit. Is that what we're kind of... Survey. And that would include uh, the survey. Or I could make it, we can make it conditional upon approval to have a survey. That's correct, point. because then if it doesn't meet it and it's short and it's not meeting it, then it, it, they wouldn't be able to get the, board, the variance or else they would have to come back. The other thing I think that the board may want to consider is they talk about the green treated, you know, is everyone okay with the, the treated wood? It, do you want to see it stained? Do you want, you know, um, you know that, that white is pretty striking with the house and, and to just have a green treated deck, um, you know, to go along with it, you know, that's something else to consider as well. Uh, question uh, owner has a go for it. Yeah. Would, would you rather see us put siding on it like on the house so it matches the house exactly? No. No? Oh. No. Okay. That won't that won't be very appealing at all. I mean if you wanted to do some, you know, nice rails or spindles or something to that effect, um that that would look better than just mm -hmm. having additional siding. There's okay. a lot of siding when you look yeah. at the building already. Right. All it is is white siding. So I mean, even if this was stained and had some, you know, decent design to it in terms of the rail or spindles or something to that effect, it certainly would add something. So I don't know if that's what, you know, the board wants to consider okay. if, if, if approving it, you know, that would certainly be the survey and, and, you know, design would be some elements that should be incorporated in any type of uh, approval if the board chooses that, if they don't deny it. Well, I mean, we can certainly paint it this year. It's just, uh, 
they recommend with treated wood that you wait, you know, a year to 18 months or your paint's gonna peel right off. So that, that's why we are gonna wait. Our problem is that we start doing this, all of a sudden the next door neighbor wants to move it uh, within two feet of the sidewalk in front and what do you, where do you stop this, you know? Yeah. It's just never uh, so. Uh, I got two. Yep. <laughs> Press the button, Pat. Just a couple of questions. Do you have your state qualifier and your CQ from the state? I do, yes. Okay. Second thing is, um, in, in lieu of a survey, we also are able to contact the engineering department and they'll give us what the setback is from center of road. And then you would come up with a drawing, not a sketch, showing everything in scale drawing. But you want okay. That's something else the board can think about as well. I'm just throwing it out there. And then to the board again, third thing is that, again, no permit was issued, so there was no plans to meet the deck code. And I think I had a couple of issues when I went out there as far as joist spans. So if you approve this tonight, and I don't know what you're gonna do, and he has to tear half that deck apart, am I gonna allow him to put it back again? That's the question I have. I, I, the answer to that would be, they would need to get a plan that meets code. And if, it, if they don't get you a plan that meets code, if the deck's not meeting code, they need to do whatever is necessary to meet that co building code. That's what I'm saying. So if they would have to tear part of the deck apart to meet the code, yes. Can Proceed he put it back where you guys approved it? Or do we got an issue yeah. again? Hang on a second time. Could you ask that one more time, please? So if, if, if it's granted where the deck is right now, and he has to tear that deck apart, to, re, to make it meet code. Is that a new deck again? And is he gonna to have to come back again? I, I think there's a couple of things on this. I just wanna make sure before I- and, and, and we can talk more about that. But first of all, you know, again, if this is being approved, I think a survey is a smart thing to do because we don't even know what we're measuring this up to. Uh, second of all, if it's approved, they should get you plans that you know, show how they're meeting requirements. And if that requires them to remove things, it requires them to remove things. Okay. And then they would get the permit as they should have in the first place, if we go that route. Great. Don? Rob, would you care to comment? Do we have the option of tabling this and let the issues get resolved before it comes before us so we're not layering on so many So in other words, the next time it comes before us, we have a billing permit in front of us? Well, it's something that's more understandable, mm -hmm. but also you, you tack on so many amendments, um, then who follows up on the amendments? Mm -hmm. It would be a lot cleaner just to come in with an appropriately presented presentation. Good point. Good point, Rob. Yeah. Uh, uh, tabling is always something that we can do. Um, obviously, the questions that are, are posed here are, you know, I don't know if in the meantime they could get a drawing that specifies what it is, get the building permits in the pat, and get some type of design so we know exactly what we're looking at. And, and we've done that in the past. And if the board feels comfortable, um, instead of denying it, to give the applicant an opportunity to get that in here to reconsider that, that's certainly a, uh, an avenue the board can take. Having said that and having heard that. Uh, we'll make a motion to table this for future discussion. Future submission. Is there a second to that? He's making oh, a motion to table it. Second. There's a second. I'll call the question. Is it all in favor? Say aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. Would, would I be able to get on next month then? As long as you move fairly quickly in terms yeah. of your drawings and getting everything in, yes. Yeah. So you just want to stay in uh, contact with Pat and I okay. and uh, make sure we get all that. So if there's any questions, but yeah, we could get you back on next week, depending on how quickly you can get things in, or I'm sorry, next month, um, next month how yeah. quickly you can get it in. Yeah. So I'm, just I'm, stay in contact with I'm us. I'm comfortable, you know, getting it back. That's your middle name, isn't it? Right. Gonzalez? 
Pardon? Is no. your middle name Speedy Gonzalez? No, just, yeah. I mean, if I have to get a survey, I don't know if I can yeah, do sure. that. They're pretty busy. Yeah, yeah. so we can but talk about that. Use Con this. A contractor gets something together, get some uh, plans, uh, as well as something that shows us from a design, hey, here's what we're thinking. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. All in favor, say aye about tabling it. Aye. Opposed? It's carried. Okay. You understand what the tabling means? Yeah, and I have to call Pat to find out about Yes, please do. Engineering? Yes, line. well, somebody's going to have to submit the plans to me to oh, meet the deck code, to meet the Appendix B of the UDC code. Okay, yeah, we can do it, but you mentioned some of you are getting drawings from engineering. You can't do that. Instead of a survey. You need a certified survey. Okay, we'll get a rush on that. Good luck. Chad, you're up to bat. Um, what we're taking a look here is a very ap variance application by Jad Moore requesting to add the width of the driveway at 2507 North 38th Street. Is he, uh, are you talking about widening the approach there too? Uh, excuse me? I didn't hear you. Because I noticed there's no curb there or anything. It's all black off. Uh, well, the unique thing about this property that most of the properties down 38th are town, not city. Mm -hmm. I believe there's two or three of the properties that are actually uh, city properties and not town, so there is no curbs uh, or sidewalks okay. or overnight parking on the road. Uh, the reason why I'm filing for it is because if you noticed on the drawing here where the slant is where you got your cursor, that's the third car garage. So if I actually park, I mean, you got three rows three cars going in straight. If you're ready to pull into the third car garage, you won't be able to even make the turn while staying on the concrete. You'd have to drive straight into the lawn uh, in order to get there. You see, uh, if you hey, pull, I, go I, down a little I bit. I apologize. This thing's not working with me here. Chad, are you only doing a triangle in uh Cement, or are you, take, are you adding you on width on the approach too? Uh, the approach as well. Where you see the dotted lines on my diagram, there, it's uh, the dotted line there. If you bring it down, uh, not that one. Next one? Yep, that one right there. Okay, that's the existing conditions right now. What is it? What you see right there outlined in the red is the existing. Okay, that's all the existing concrete in front of the garage, the two car garage and the one car garage. The one with the dotted lines, yes, that's gravel approach, mm -hmm. which is kind of a nuisance. That's 16 okay. feet okay. from the existence. Yeah, okay. And then the block to the right, right there, that's all grass, leads to the third car garage. So you can see you're bottlenecked in to even get to each garage door slot. If I'm parked in front of garage one and two, you're not going on three. You'll have to drive right through the grass. So what you want to concrete, as I understand it, is uh, make a straight line to the end of the concrete now to the Correct. south, up yes. to the lot line. You are up to your well, existing concrete now. It's going in a three-car three garage. I would, well, from north to south, I'd like to keep the same width. Gravel? Yeah. And what I would like to do is keep the same width, which is, I have a survey attached on there, the existing concrete now at the house is 34 foot 7 inches. <coughs> now, if you look, see where it's bottled neck down, it reduces down to like 22 feet. And I know that the city, I, I spoke to a nice gentleman here in regards to that, and I was told 25 feet. That's what led me here today uh, to get the variance. So the proposed new concrete would be the part to the west, all of it, the approach to continue what should have been done in the first place rather than gravel, in my opinion, and then also that uh, the triangle piece. So it would be 16 feet out further to get the approach correct and then keep the same width at 34 foot 7 out to the approach, all the way to the road. That way we can park in our driveway, not be on the street and worry about moving our vehicles off of the city street or town street, however you want to look at it, and park in the driveway. Otherwise, what we're doing is rotating vehicles all the time, or we're parking in the lawn, or we're driving through our lawn to get to the third gar gar garage, and it tears up the lawn, which creates an eyesore. 
I can make a few comments. I, I think if you take a look at the picture that I gave to you guys, you can kind of see the neighborhood yeah. and the existing situation. I don't know um, if you want to take this. I don't have it on the screen, but this is what I gave to them to take a look at. That gives a good picture. But I think what you what you have over here is you have a town road. Um, it's got no curb, gutter, sidewalk. Um, some of the properties are in the town, some of the properties are in the city. Um, uh, there are others in that same block that have done similar things to what um, Chad Moore is uh, requesting. So from a staff perspective, there were uh, no objections to the request. Pat, do you have anything to say? No, just remember you are in the city, so I need a permit. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, thank you. You got it. And I'm a licensed contractor. <laughs> there you go. I know the rules. <laughs> uh, good. No, I don't have any issues with it either. As I told your son last night, uh, until you get a grade of the street here, you really don't, don't want to do anything when you approach there either because you don't know what the light's going to be. Oh, yeah, eventually. that's right. I, I, well, I was glad he told you the correct uh, measurements when but you went there yesterday. I have the, regarding uh, replacing where the gravel is. Do you have a drainage culvert there to be concerned about? I'm sure you're concerned if you do, but is that um, There is no drainage culvert in the existing condition that is now. Whether I'm required to have one or not, I don't know. Uh, so that would be something that would be, I would be looking at answers from you guys, I guess, for if how- If you needed one, you'd want one. You'd already know that, you live there. Yeah, uh, I don't, we don't have a problem with water drainage now. I don't think we're gonna change the elevation of the land too much, maybe on that one corner where you see, but uh, I think there's enough green space to absorb it. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not real sure about that, so. One of the things we can do too is get uh, engineering to maybe take a look at that. I don't know, Pat, if you had anything. The only thing is, I did run into this once before about city lot. You are a town road. You need to go to the town to figure out how wide you can make that access approach from the street. We don't deal with that. So if the town gives you permission to widen that at the road that far, you can do it. You need to check with the town. Okay. I got my hand slapped for that. So we're, because you're in the city, we're just telling you, yes, you can do this, but town for the curb, you, whether it's curb or not, it doesn't matter. It's an approach from the street. Okay. They're gonna tell you if you can or cannot do that. Okay. Don't forget that. Yeah, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll see what the town says about that. Now, when I do approach the town for that, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking for direction too because I do know, I don't want this to come across the wrong way, but I do know in my city tax dollars go to the city and that's why I'm before this board to see what direction I need to, to go. So now I got to go to the town and ask them for permission to do too. But I'm, I mean, you get, and I mean that let, with all let's, respect let's, in the world. Let's uh, work on this and then you and I can speak, see whether or not we get engineering in there and we can get some information back to you in terms of if there's the need to go to the town or not. So okay. uh, let's uh, maybe take some action one way or the other on this, and if it gets approved, then you and I can speak and see who else we can speak to on Fair this. enough. I'll entertain a motion. Kevin, Rob, um, Ed, what, what is your motion, though, Ed? Uh, to approve what? The widening the driveway up to the town road. Subject to the town telling him whatever's gotta be done for the approach. I, don't think that's our issue. Uh, I, I would I would strictly recommend approving or denying the request as presented. The second approval. Okay, seconded. Any other discussion? I'll call the question. We'll vote on it. All in favor of approving it as uh, proposed? Aye. Aye. Against? It's approved. Thank you guys. Good luck there, Chad. And I will talk to town. Next up to bat, Mr. Pelican from Wiedemeyer. Okay, okay. Good afternoon. Just out of curiosity, there was a fellow by the name of Pelican that was a reporter, I think, for the press or something. Was that in relation to you? That is not my side of the family. Um, the rest of mine comes more from Canada, so um, I'm more of an implant 
Um, we're looking to extend our driveway out in front of the house. We have a 1957 original, we're the second owners. Our issue is with our driveway, um, every time we get out of our vehicle because of the lot line, we are walking onto the neighbor's yard. That's a landscaping one. Um, so the wife's vehicle is also nine feet wide, which is the at length of our driveway. Um, I have submitted pictures too of showing that when the um, vehicle's in, and in the winter, if you do just our driveway, we are literally jumping into the snow bank. So each year I'm really snow blowing the neighbor's yard. If we go past the house, we do have a privacy fence from the neighbor right on the lot line. And the, you will see a picture with the vehicle that limits, um, that's the front. So when we are parked right in the middle, if you jump off, you are, with two kids, we are always on the neighbor's yard, which is um, somewhat of an irritant for him and his perfect yard. Um, we would like to extend it out. If you look at the back of the house where the truck is, the that's straight, but you can't use the other doors because we are right up against his privacy fence. We have tried to turn the vehicles to make it where we could turn around. Okay, right there. Um, I did it with that's, my that's car once kind of and got right? stuck yeah, and spent yeah, 45 right. minutes trying to get my car back into the driveway. So um, I submitted the contractor's plan um, to extend it on the front so we can pull both vehicles in to also use it that when we get in and out of our vehicle, we are not walking onto the grass. I do want to maintain the integrity of the 1950s house. We also, right on the bottom where you kind of see the curb come up, that's where our nine foot ash tree was, our four foot wide ash tree that the city removed last year. That stump is coming up and pushing up um, out of the ground. So when we would do the driveway, we would also have to remove the stump that's underneath the grass. The roots in that are starting to come up this year and push up the sidewalk and the curb through that area, which there is also broken parts of the curbs. So we would be doing 25 feet, I, uh, no, I throw off memory, 22 feet of sidewalk and 25 feet of city curb we would replace to make it all new also. Um, I guess my pictures, I tried to show how the curb is coming up. Um, I believe someone walked yesterday with my wife, Elizabeth, and she was able to show. So the end result is to make sure that it looks like it's always been there and that it's not a just added on afterthought. That's why we would remove that front sidewalk that would give us 923 square feet of just grass. Um, I want to keep the integrity of the house and the neighborhood just to make it look like it's always been there, but at the same point, have a driveway where we can actually get in and out of our vehicles without walking on the neighbor's yard. Um, we hope he never puts up a rope fence or anything because then our driveway would be useless on the one side. Questions? Um, Just to clarify my thinking, um, what you're proposing is putting concrete in front of your front window there all the way up to the existing sidewalk that's going through the house right now? Um, the handicap ramp, we would extend the um, driveway in the front out another. So you're going to widen the approach also? You want yes, to? we were widening it. Do you want to widen it? So you, when you're pulling in, you don't have your vehicle turned, that it always looks like it's not an added afterthought. Um, I, during looking around, I've not seen a pad where you pull off that ever looks like it was meant to be there. They always look like you were being cheap and you tried to add it on. I want it to look like when you come up that it was originally thought that way. Um, I am open for other ideas. I am flexible, but ultimately I was hoping to, like I said, make a 
driveway more useful, but yet also keep the integrity. That's one of the reasons we would remove that front sidewalk to give us more green space. Sure, sure. Um, this is uh, something that the board and, and uh, both uh, uh, Pat and I have spoken to Mr. Peliquin about this particular project and that it was uh, a tough one to present to the board. Um, this is something that uh, the board has denied in the past as far as putting parking spaces directly in front of the homes itself. Um, we do have an ordinance, it, obviously, in Mr. Pelican's, uh position, he doesn't have the room to go to uh, further to the south. But um, uh, one of the things that we've tried not to have is parking spaces right in front of the homes. And if you take a look at you know some of the photos that I, I provided to you, and you take a look at the homes and the rest of the block, there's no one in this whole area that has any type of additional parking that's directly in front of their home. So from a staff perspective, we would not be recommending approval of the variance request that you have before you. Well, this board has been together for a while, and I think you all remember we had one on North 40th. It was the same thing. You wanted to put a cement slab in, in its front lawn, and you remember what we did with that one. So hearing that, I'll uh, take a motion for somebody. Anybody else that wants to speak on us? Pardon me? You will make a motion to do what? All right, I'll make a motion to disapprove it. Deny. Is there a second? So there's a motion to deny? Yes. Because, all right, then I'll second that. It's been motion made and second. Is there any other discussion? And I'll call a question. All in favor of denying it, say aye. Aye. Oppo opposed? I'm sorry, Mr. Pelican. It's turned down. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there anything else to be brought before the board today? I think the only thing I would mention is that we can work with the uh, 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 deck. We appreciate your comments, and we'll try to get some more information back to you to make a decision with regards to that matter. Any other business to be brought before the board? No. Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.